Hey everyone, it's Alyssa and I'm standing here today with Ranger Claire and spring is here. It doesn't feel like it <laughs> oh, right it now. Woo. It actually snowed up on the mountain uh, two days ago and in the big meadow we have some pictures we'll share with you and it's a little windy today when we're filming but believe it or not spring is here and next week the temps are going to go back to our normal as a normal little, can be here's a good little sign of spring right here yes. this is the red bud tree and um in the lower elevations it's starting to pop so that stretch of road from front royal entrance station in is going to be a gorgeous mixture of the lime greens of spring the yes. red bud and the dogwood blooming here really soon so yeah it's you, coming it's it just is. hard to imagine right now <laughs> And you can also see that it's sort of starting to green up in the mm -hmm. valley. So when you're up on the summits or in the park anywhere, you can kind of look down below and see the progression of green kind of peeking its way up into the park. So look forward to that too. <laughs> so we are going to talk to you guys today about visitation tips and just kind of general knowledge you should know about the park. Um, since we are reopening a lot of things such as campgrounds and there are still digital passes that are available and so go ahead and talk to us about digital passes or any pass at the entrance station. That's a relatively new thing that we're doing um, and it really helps with the, the crowds and the lines. So on these weekends when we're getting so busy and we've noticed a lot of visitation even during the week right now for mm -hmm. I guess spring breaks and that sort of thing. But recreation.gov and you search for Shenandoah and you can get your entrance permit there and have that with you when you arrive and we have special lanes set up for those and it just it helps move things a little bit more quickly. You can get your annual passes there as well, but you can get your annual passes here at the park mm -hmm. um, at the entrance station. And those include the Shenandoah Pass, which is a fantastic deal. If you're going to come to the park more than two times a year, that's the way to go. Yep. Then there's the America the Beautiful Pass, which works in all federal fee collecting areas. Then there's also the Military Pass the access pass and the senior pass. So all of those yep. are available right at the entrance station, but it's a good idea to go to our website and look at what sorts of documentation you may need for some of those special passes. If you have an annual pass, be sure to bring a photo ID with you because entrance station personnel are starting to check those again. So a photo ID along with your uh, annual pass. So we're pretty excited to see so many visitors back in the park um, and everything's getting busier and busier, especially on the nice weekends, um, even our campgrounds, right? Oh my gosh. So just like the animals coming out of hibernation, so are our visitors for spring. <laughs> uh, in fact, Lewis Mountain and Big Meadows, they were filled last weekend yep. and they're quickly filling again. And right now they are operating on a first come first served basis. So what does that mean? That means you got to be there to get a site. And it's hard for us to predict when those sites will be filled. So it's really, really important to keep up with our social media. Um, on Fridays, right. we are going to be posting the availability on our Facebook pages, Instagram stories, and our Twitter feed. So make sure that you are checking those before you come to the park to see if you can get a campsite. Um, Speaking of visitors coming to the park, there are some safety tips that we should probably share when they're out hiking or driving or just out and about looking at wildflowers or anything. <laughs> yep, yep, we do have a few just to pass along. Um, one of our rangers, Kevin Moses, has <laughs> asked us to tell you guys that despite what you might think, your cell phone is not a flashlight. Now, what Kevin is concerned about is with um, people out hiking and never really kind of knowing what, what could happen, they're being caught un, unprepared. So it's always a good idea to have a little um, flashlight in your backpack and in case your, your cell phone loses power. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, cell phone is very spotty in Shenandoah, so yeah. you, don't, you can't rely on having a signal. So it's also a good idea to be sure if you're using an app to download the outflying content, if that is um, possible, or go ahead and print that trail map out and bring it with you. They're also available at the entrance stations, but um, a little preparing uh, will definitely help make your, your visit much, much safer. Also, don't forget, <laughs> it's still getting pretty cold at night yeah. and during some of the days, so bring layers. Be sure that you have layers um, and remember that fires are not permitted in Shenandoah 
backcountry, only at established park-built fire rings. And if you happen to have a fire at a picnic area or your campground, um, be sure it is fully extinguished before you go to bed or before you leave. Um, and the last thing, and I can't believe we have to talk about this I know, already, but I we know. do. <laughs> we are already finding ticks. Um, we've seen them a lot already. So be sure you're checking for ticks and you're understanding the tick situation in Shenandoah. If you have flu-like symptoms, um, at, even up to six weeks after you've been in the park or outdoors, it's a good idea to let your healthcare provider know that you've been in tick habitat. But it's already time to get vigilant for those little suckers. <laughs> so on that Literally happy note, figuratively. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so on that happy note, we are going to get the spring celebration started. Yay. And what better way to do that than to toss it over to Ranger Mara and she's going to take us on our first wildflower walk of the year. So we have a bunch of these online. Right? Yes. We're going to do several more. So we're excited about that. Mara's going to have us out all over the park looking for the elusive wildflowers. They seem elusive <laughs> today. Hi, I'm Ranger Mara at Shenandoah National Park and we are celebrating wildflowers. We're celebrating spring and that means wildflowers here in Shenandoah. The wildflowers will start to bloom generally at the lower elevations in the park because that's where it's warmest. That's where the sun is, is still um, shining through the forest. As the trees begin to leaf out down here, they're gonna provide a lot of shade and that means those wildflowers won't have the sunshine anymore. So they will begin to fade away as the leaves come out on the trees. So that's just beginning to happen now at the lowest elevations here in Shenandoah. When you walk in the woods, you may look around and see not much of anything. It just looks like the leaves have fallen on the ground. There's logs everywhere and rocks and branches and twigs. But if you look closer, you may find there's a lot more going on than you thought. And that's where you might find some of our spring woodland wildflowers. So today we're going to be looking for those native woodland spring wildflowers that will be among the first to bloom. And you can find them too. One thing I will ask everybody when it's wildflowers time or any other time in the park to please leave all of our wildflowers attached so that they can continue to grow, bloom, and produce seeds for next year. And that way everyone else will have a chance to see the beautiful wildflowers that you will be seeing. Today we hope to find a few different wildflowers of different species, different families that you may find at the lower elevations at this time of year. Come along with me and let's see what we can find. I just saw a really interesting flower, but it's off the trail. And I wanna give you a little bit of advice to help to keep our, our plants alive and from being um, destroyed by us going and looking for the plants. So if you see a flower that's off the trail and you wanna get a closer look, it's okay to do that, but you don't wanna walk on other flowers on your way. So try to walk on a rock or a, a piece of wood, a log or something, so that you're not trampling other flowers in your rush to get to this other beauty. So let's see how we can do that here. We'll just go up on a rock, little piece of uh, wood here, another rock, and here. And my flower is gonna be way over there. So what I'm looking at is a hepatica flower and it's right on the edge of the bank. And staying safe, we're not going to get very close to that bank because we don't want any of us to fall into the stream down there. But you can get closer like this to get a picture. But you can also make sure that you're not trampling other plants on your way to get a good photo or a close-up look at a nice flower. So springtime is when these flowers are just starting to come up. And a lot of them are in bud right now. So you'll see the little buds on there. They're not quite open, but you might see some color. And that means that those flowers are going to be blooming within the next week. So if you see the buds, those flowers are going to follow shortly after. And down here, we've got one that just opened up. This is a nice hepatica flower. They'll be purple or white. And we'll see if we can't see some more of those close up 
on this walk today. There's a little yellow violet that's not quite open yet, and that's a smooth yellow violet. Uh, we have a lot of different violets here in the park, and they're not necessarily violet in color. We have some white ones, yellow ones, purple ones, so uh, it's great to look for those in the springtime. And right here, we've got a little bud coming up, just like a, looks like a blade of grass right here. And that's going, going to be, it is a, a bellwort uh, flower. And that's a member of the lily family that will have a small yellow flower that hangs down. And that's not going to be quite ready yet. Maybe another week uh, or week and a half before those bloom. And here we've got our spring beauties. And they are just starting to open up, but they'll open up a lot a lot fuller um, as the days go by. So you'll see some buds for spring beauties mixed in with all of these. There's also some small chickweed um, and some veronicas that are in bud around here. So look for those buds. And if you have a chance to come back in the next week or so, maybe two or even three, depending on what elevation you are in the park, you may see those blooming. one of my favorite spring wildflowers here in Shenandoah. This is called Dutchman's Britches. And it looks like someone hung their laundry out to dry, but very, very cute little flowers on there. One of our earliest spring bloomers. It's actually, speaking of bloomers, they look like old bloomers, don't they? <laughs> old fashioned bloomers hanging on a wash line. But uh, they're actually um, a member of the poppy family. If you have uh, bleeding hearts at home in your gardens or if you've seen them, they are in the same family. And you might notice the leaves are very similar to those of the, the bleeding heart. But this is always a delightful flower to come across in our early spring woodlands here in Shenandoah, Dutchman's Bridges. found a lovely uh, little bloom down here. It's just beginning to open. It's not open yet. This is our bloodroot, a beautiful little flower that will have petals coming out that'll be about, oh, they're going to be about this big around whenever they bloom. Nice, nice big flower. Um, but what's cool about bloodroot, well, there's a lot of cool things about it, but it, when it comes up, it comes up between the leaf. The leaf kind of cradles the, the stem as the flower is coming up. And then as the flower blooms, the, the, flower, the leaf will open up. So we're still in the early stages right now. As we said, it's the first uh, week that wildflowers are blooming pretty much here in the park at the lower elevation. So you're going to see lots of budding uh, flowers or flowers about to bloom. When you walk in the woods in Shenandoah National Park, you may see a lot of downed trees like this one behind me, which happens to be an old hemlock. But other trees have fallen. It's just a natural part of a tree's life. When the tree dies, it lands on the ground. It doesn't look very tidy, but that's okay because that's the way nature is. And this is very important in our eastern temperate forests that these trees are on the ground for a little while. And as they begin to rot away, their bark will become uh, very soft and eventually help to renew the soil. And that's what it encourages these flowers every spring is the newly recharged nutrients that are in the soil. And that comes from dying uh, trees or dead trees that have rotted and started to sink back into the, sur the soil surface again. a nice patch of trout lilies. This is a beautiful member of the lily family that will send up a stalk about six inches tall and will have a dangling yellow 
uh, flower on the end. Uh, it looks a little bit like our um, uh, daylilies that we have in our yards at home, but much smaller and only about, only about that long and yellow. Now, trout lilies like to grow where it's moist, and so you'll notice that this patch is right next to the stream here. So sometimes you will see these around waterfalls and other streams in the park. Now, we see a lot of leaves here, but not every one of those is going to shoot up a flower because it takes sometimes several years for certain plants to get a, gather enough energy and nutrients from the soil to produce a flower. So in this whole patch of trout lilies, we may have one or two flowers. So every year there may be a few more and then those original ones will die back. So, um, but this is a nice uh, grouping right here and one of the, the bigger patches of trout lilies that I've seen in the park. This is another one of our beautiful spring native wildflowers. It's called golden ragwort and it's a member of the composite family. So it's like dandelions and daisies. It will have a lot of petals. The flowers will be about the size of a, a nickel, maybe a quarter, uh, <laughs> if they get a little bigger. And they'll have yellow petals with a yellow center in it. But when you see them like this, when they're just in bud, the buds are a maroon kind of deep purple color. And so people are confused sometimes and wonder why is the bud purple but the flower yellow? Well, if you've seen dandelions growing in your yard or around the house, you may have noticed that they also have a reddish stem uh, and a yellow flower on them. So it's just the amount of, it's called anthocyanin, which is kind of a coloring um, in that stem. And it may help them to uh, take in more of the, the sun's uh, rays as they're, as they're growing. But that's why they're red and then the flowers inside are a different color. There are a lot of uh, flowers budding this early in the season, and one of them is toothwort. It's got these very cut-leaved, toothy <laughs> leaves on it. Um, toothwort is actually a member of the mustard family, and those are flowers that will have four petals. Uh, these ones will have a tube, and at the very end, the four petals will open up. They'll be either uh, white or a pinkish-purple color when they open. The cool thing about toothwort is that it is the one of the larval host plants for the West Virginia white butterfly. And that's one that's kind of rare here in, in this part of the world, um, this part of Virginia. And the caterpillars of the West Virginia white will feed on the, the toothwort leaves, and that's a very important plant for them. When you're looking for spring wildflowers in Shenandoah National Park, not all of the wildflowers are on the ground, so be sure to look up a little bit and you may see some blooming shrubs or even some trees in bloom in the springtime. One of our earliest shrubs to bloom in the springtime here in Shenandoah is spicebush. They've got these beautiful tiny yellow flowers and they've got a little bit of a spicy scent to them. Spicebush is also uh, important for the spicebush swallowtail butterfly. You can guess what the larval host plant is for that caterpillar. It's spicebush. Though the caterpillar will feed on some other plants as well, that's one of its favorites. So it's a very important plant here for a certain little insect that you may find flying around probably a little bit later, early summer. Thanks for joining me today on our hike in search of wildflowers here in Shenandoah National Park. Today we've seen ones that are just starting to open up, but most of our woodland wildflowers are still in the budding stage. So in future, we hope to uh, show you some more of our wildflowers as they open this springtime so that you can follow the spring bloom uh, here in Shenandoah National Park. Another way you can do that is by staying at home and checking in regularly with our social media or even to subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel where we will have these uh, on, on uh, record. And we don't know where we're going to be next time, but today we were on the White Oak Canyon Trail. The wildflowers are starting to bloom, remember, at the park boundaries, at the lower elevations. So they're not blooming yet up on Skyline Drive. So if you're really searching for wildflowers, those boundary trails are going to be your best bet right now. Until our next time, this is Ranger Mara from Shenandoah National Park.